Hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to do a short video um, with one more graphing quadratic equations function, or a quadratic function for you. Um, we did one of these in class yesterday. We did one in vertex form. Um, I wanted to show you one in standard form, and I also wanted you to how I wanted to show you how to work backwards to create the equation from a given graph. So that's what we'll be doing uh, real quick. Again, yesterday we did the vertex form example graphing a quadratic that's in vertex form. In this video, I want to do one that is in standard form in the way that we're used to seeing quadratics. So that's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is kind of the way that we've always seen them before. Um, standard form is um, kind of the what we've been seeing thus far. Um, that's kind of how quadratics are usually written, and it just makes finding the vertex a little bit more tricky. Um, again, vertex form, when it's written out in this form, um, it's really easy to just grab your vertex HK, but in standard form, we have to do a little bit more work. The X coordinate of our vertex is X equals minus B over 2A, and then once you get your X value, you're just going to plug that X value into your function to get Y. Um, the axis of symmetry is going to be the vertical line x equals minus b over 2a. Again, that's just the x-coordinate of your vertex. So x equals the x-coordinate of your vertex. Um, again, the a value that's in front of our x squared, that will tell us whether the parabola opens up. If a is positive, it will open up. If a is negative, we will open down. And then to find your x-intercepts, you'll set y equal to 0 and solve. To find your y-intercepts, you'll set x equal to 0 and solve. Once you do all of those things, you'll put that um, on a graph. And then um, just a heads up, when you do this in Alex, Alex is going to require five points, your vertex, and then two points on either side of your vertex. Um, the Your intercepts count as um, some of those points. Um, and then if you need an extra one, you can always just pick any x value you want, plug it into your function, um, and use your axis of symmetry to help you. All right, so we did this vertex form one in class yesterday, but I want to show you number two here that's given to us in standard form. So standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that means our a value is 1 here, our b value is 10, and our c value is 21. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the location of our vertex. In standard form, we will calculate our vertex first by the x-coordinate. x will be minus b over 2a, and we'll get that a and b from our equation here. So our b value is 10, so we'll have negative 10 over 2 times our a value, which is 1 here. So the x-coordinate of our vertex is going to be negative 10 divided by 2, which is negative 5. So that's the x-coordinate of our vertex. And then to find the y-coordinate of our vertex, we're going to take x equals negative 5 and plug it back into our original equation to figure out what y is. So this is going to be g of negative 5. We'll take negative 5 and plug it into our function here. So it's going to be negative 5 squared plus 10 times negative 5 plus 21. Doing the math here, we'll have 25 minus 50 plus 21. If you put that, you can put that into a calculator if you feel more comfortable. 25 minus 50 is negative 25 plus 21 gives us negative 4 overall. That means our vertex is at the ordered pair negative 5, negative 4. That's our x and y. That's where our vertex is. And that means our axis of symmetry then will be the equation x equals negative 5. That's the vertical line that goes through our vertex. And now we'll calculate our intercepts. Um, so let's do our x-intercepts first. Again, for x-intercepts, you set y equal to 0. So y is right here, g of x. So we'll plug 0 in for y, and we get 0 equals x squared plus 10x plus 21. Now we have to solve this quadratic equation. 
uh, let's try factoring first. Um, so our, I'll switch colors here so we can kind of see this. Our um, A times C will be one times 21, which is 21. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 21 and they have to add to 10. So our two numbers are positive three and positive seven. And our A value here is one, which means that to factor this, we can just put those numbers into um, parentheses with our X values. Um, in class yesterday, I mentioned if A is not one, then you have to use those numbers to split your middle term and go from there. Since A is one here, we'll kind of take the shortcut and just pop those two numbers into parentheses with an X value. If you split your middle term, go ahead and like, if you, if you, if this part doesn't make sense to you, just always split your middle term factor by grouping and you'll end up right back here. So this factors into X plus three times X plus seven. From here, we've got two things multiplying to zero, which means either X plus three equals zero or X plus seven equals zero. So we'll set each factor equal to zero and solve for X. So that means X equals negative three or X equals negative seven. Those are our two X intercepts. All right, so now we'll do our Y intercept here. To find our Y intercept, you're going to set X equal to zero. And when we set X equal to zero in our function back up here, Y will equal zero squared plus 10 times zero plus 21. And that means Y equals 21 is our X, or, or sorry, our Y intercept. All right, so let's put all of this stuff on our graph. So our vertex is negative five, negative four. So this is our vertex. Our axis of symmetry is X equals negative five. I'll just dot that in. That's our axis of symmetry. Um, our X intercepts are negative three and negative seven. So here at negative seven, that's an X intercept and negative three is an X intercept. And our Y intercept is gonna be at positive 21. That's off the graph. So hmm, I can't actually put that one on my graph. So hmm, Alex is going to want two points on either side of our vertex. We only have one point on either side of our vertex because our Y intercept is just off the charts here. So we need another point on either side. So let's just pick an X value. We'll plug it in um, and see what we get. Um, so I'm just gonna pick an X value. How about X equals negative two? I'm gonna see where this one goes. So if I take negative two, I'm going to plug it into my function up here to get Y. So then Y is gonna equal negative two squared plus 10 times negative two plus 21. So that means Y is going to be four minus 20 plus 21. And that means overall Y will be five. So the point negative two five is on my graph, right? Because X equals negative two, Y equals five those are in a relationship on our graph. So negative two, five is a point on my graph here. So I have a point right here. Now, by our axis of symmetry, because I have a point right here, I have to have a point on the other side on, for a mirror image of our, um, over our axis of symmetry. That means I have to have another point right over here. This one comes from symmetry. By symmetry, I can't spell. That says by symmetry. Okay, so we have our vertex and two points on either side, and now we can fill in our graph. Now for me on quizzes and tests, I don't need two points on either side. Once you have your vertex and your intercepts, you can kind of see what that U shape looks like. 
um, and you can just fill it in. You don't need to get two points on either side for me personally on quizzes and tests, um, but Alex will require two points on either side. So if you need additional points, go ahead and just pick an X value and plug it into your function. And then you can use your axis of symmetry to get an additional point on the other side of that if you need to. So that's how we graph um, an equation in standard form. Very similar to vertex form, um, just that the way that you find your vertex is a little bit different. Okay, so one last thing that I wanted to cover is what if you're given a graph and you have to find an equation from the graph? Hmm. Okay, so, hmm. Well, let's, we've got some information here. So let's look at number one. We have, they give us the coordinate of your vertex. Our vertex is four, negative seven. And then we're given an additional point over here. This point is five, negative four. Now they're always going to give you your vertex for this, um, for these problems. So you're going to use vertex form to create your equations. That's gonna make your life a lot simpler. So vertex form looks like y equals a times the quantity x minus h, that quantity squared, plus k. This is vertex form for a parabola. And h, k here, this is the um, coordinates of your vertex. So your vertex in vertex form is h, k, which in our situation, our vertex here is four, negative seven. That means H is four and K is negative seven. So I can go ahead and plug those in. So H is four, so I'll have X minus four squared and K is negative seven, so I'll have a minus seven out here. Plugging in four for H and negative seven for K. So we almost ha are, have a full equation here. I just don't know what A is. So how do we find A? Well, the answer to that is we have an additional piece of information here that we haven't used yet. I know that the ordered pair five negative four is a point on my graph. That means when X equals five, it's in a relationship with Y equals negative four. This X and this Y are in a relationship with each other on our um, parabola, and this is the equation of our parabola. So I can go ahead and plug 5 in for x and negative 4 in for y because I know that our equation needs to link those two together. So when y is negative 4, I don't know what a is, so I'm going to leave that as a, but I know that x is 5, and then I'm going to leave everything else the same. I know that h is still 4 and k is still negative 7. So now I have an equation here, and the only variable in here is a. So I can solve for it. So let's start solving for a here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is simplify inside my parentheses. So order of operations says 5 minus 4 is what I have to do first. 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. And I'm going to have this minus 7 out here. So that means negative 4 equals a minus 7 because a times one is just a. So now to get to a, I'm just gonna add seven to both sides. That means three is a. And now I have everything I need, so I can take this a value and plug it back into the equation that we had up here, because we had everything except for a up there. So now I can just plug my a value in, and we get y equals three times x minus four squared minus seven. This is the equation of the, this parabola in number one. All right, so let's try this again. Um, so in number two here, our vertex, which is h, k, is now at the ordered pair three, four, which means h equals three and k equals four. So I'm going to plug that into vertex form. So I get y equals a times x minus h, which is 3 squared plus k, which here is 4. 
And then I just need to figure out what A is. And again, I'm going to use 4, 1 as my X and my Y to solve for A. So Y is 1 here. I still don't know what A is, so I'm going to leave that as A. My X value is 4. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. So now we can solve this out. So 1 is going to equal A times 4 minus 3 is 1 again. 1 squared is still 1 plus 4. Um, so I'm going to subtract that 4 from both sides. And negative 3 equals A times 1 is just A. So A is negative 3. And so now I can put that back into my equation up here. And so my full equation is Y equals A, which is negative 3, times X minus 3 squared plus 4. That is the full equation in vertex form. All right, so that's how you're going to create equations from graphs. It's not too bad. Take your vertex HK, plug it in, and then use that extra point as an X and a Y to solve for A. And then you're done. I hope this helps with homework seven. Um, again, I moved the um, due date for homework seven until after spring break. But please, please, please don't put it off until after spring break. Try to start working on that as soon as possible. It's going to be much easier the sooner you do your homework after the lecture. So um, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow in class.